What's up, divas? What's up, Devo? So it's your girl. Yes, I am back for Real Talk. I know you guys last week was no Real Talk, and I did have a lot of things going on in my life. Like, seriously, I did have a lot of unexpected things that went on in my life that I'm really not too happy about. Kind of made me very sad. You know what I'm saying? Um, Not to the point where it was depressing, depressing, but it made me very sad, and I'll definitely share that with you guys in this video. But Today, I'm rocking some blonde hair. This is an old wig, in case you guys are like, where'd you get it from? I think it was called Wow Wigs, or Wigs Wow, or Wigs Only, Wigs Only Wigs, OnlyWigs.com. They have like the bomb the bombest ass colorful wigs. Like, okay, the first wig that I did for them was this blue, royal blue one. And I know you guys probably remember that. The hairline on that was impeccable. Like, it was really done nicely. It had the dark roots, which I prefer. And it just, the hairline was amazing on it. Like, seriously, that was one bomb ass wig. And I did wear it for a while until, you know, I probably wore it like a probably like three days. That's a while to me, especially for that color. Um, and then I did sell it on my website. This one also came from them. This is the second one I do believe that I did from them. And the normal um, texture of this is like this wavy color, which I really didn't like because I don't like certain textures or curl patterns in certain colors. So when it comes to like platinum blonde or any type of blonde, I don't like those crimpy curls because I just feel like certain colors don't look good in certain styles. And that's just my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Y'all entitled to y'all's, but like for this particular color, I would either wear it like this, straight, or like a loose curl. I wouldn't wear it in like um crinkly curls or like tight curls or spiral curls. I just wouldn't do it. Um, but the hairline on this um is amazing too. I didn't really do anything to this one. I did a tiny bit of pre-plucking, but I didn't really have to. I did bleach the knots, but you know you know, they were good, but you, you can bleach them if you wanted to. But I love this wig. Like, it's beautiful. I think my bun is, like, kind of lopsided, though. And I got, um, this is not all the hair. Like, it's in a, um, sock bun. Like, you know, one of them little homemade sock buns that I rolled it up in and made it look a little bit bigger than normal. Um, so the hair, I think, is, like, 20 inches or 18 inches. Either way, I love this color. And I'm feeling it. Yeah, I'm not really sure why it's looking lopsided on camera because in person it doesn't look like that unless my head is crooked. But either way, it's a cute bun. I like it, huh? You know, it gives me like a totally different look, guys. Okay. Like totally different. So I do apologize for last week not doing real talk. But like I was saying, I was going through something. Um that really touched home for me. Um, now you guys know I do have five children and um, they do, <clears throat> I do have five kids. And you know, with having five children, you do get to meet a lot of their friends, you know what I'm saying? And some of their friends I may like, some of them I may not like, some of them I just don't care for at all because you know, you get that muggly instinct. And like, so my son who is 20, he'll be 21 in June. Why is my camera? Okay. So he'll be 21 in June. I think I need to update my camera. So he'll be 21 in June. You know, my son was, and he has a lot of friends. Some of them, I just really don't care for, you know, um, a lot of them, not a lot of them, but a, a few of them, let's say three. Um, yeah, exactly three. I have adopted as like my own kids. You know, there is Ari, which is his friend. She's a female, but they are best friends and um, they're not dating. They don't even see each other like that. She's a beautiful girl. Um, her mom died a couple of years ago of cancer. So, you know, she kind of looks like she's part of my family. She looks like she could be one of my kids. Um, and, you know, I just took on her as one of my kids. She's always over. She calls me mom and I love her dearly. And then he has his other friend and then he has his best, best friend, which was Josh. Okay. And he has several friends by the name of Josh, three of them. So there was black Josh because, you know, I got to know who's who. So there was Josh who was black. I would just call him black Josh, not to his face, but what me and my son would be talking, but they knew that's what we called them because they knew that there were so many Joshes that were friends with my son. So in my phone, you know, if, if we are close, if I'm close to his friends and I feel like, 
you know they're good people i'll i'll have their number they'll have mine just in case anything pops off they can call me for anything so there's black josh and then there was regular josh and then there was why is my camera keep doing that? Then there was White Josh. So White Josh was an, a year older than my son. And um Okay, I don't even know why my camera keeps flipping back and forth, but he was older than my son by a year and he actually lived in the same subdivision where we live at out here in Avondale, Arizona. So in the beginning, you know, he's just Josh. I wasn't like a huge fan of his. I didn't really know him like that. And he was very persistent as in, you know, even if I told him not to come around or stop knocking on my door, he would still come and he would always apologize and he would just be so mannerable. He had like the best manners in the world. And he became like this mentor, kind of like kid to my son. You know, he always did the right thing. He, he actually started his own entrepreneur business where he was flipping a few houses. He did flip quite a few houses, okay, at the early age. Um, and then he also was a car salesman. So with that being said, I really did like his energy and his motivation and him as a person. And so whenever I was out of town, the only person that was able to come into my home as one of my son's friends when I'm not around was Josh because he was trustworthy, you know what I'm saying? He was mannerable and I consider him close to me, you know what I'm saying? He was like one of my kids and he also would call me mom and you know what I'm saying? So he was over, he'd stay the night. He was always over when I was in the hospital, you know, he made sure I was okay. Valentine's Day, you know, he gave me flowers and candy. Mother's Day last year, Christmas, he always was over and you know, he was family. He was just Josh, that was family. Well, unfortunately on the 5th of May, um, my son who's in New York sent me a Facebook screenshot of Josh and unfortunately it said that he had passed away. Now my son Wuzzle was not aware of this because he kept trying to call Josh and text Josh since the 3rd of May and there was no answer, no response, no answer. So I ended up having to call my son Wuzzle through a friend of his phone because my son's phone, he had lost it. He has one now, but he had lost his phone. So I had to contact him through, you know, one of his friends that he was hanging out with, a um, young lady named Jayla. So I contacted him and I, you know, it broke my heart to have to tell him because I really honestly wanted this to be like a fucking joke. You know how these kids joke because it was unexpected. There was nothing wrong with him. He was fine. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately he passed away. Um, his father found him on the third in the morning and he died in his sleep. So I'm not really sure what happened, but you know, that was my son's best friend. They considered each other brothers and they were always together. And so it kinda, it did, it didn't kind of, it did. It really hit home. And um, I've only been to, this is the third funeral I've ever been to in my life. The first one, um, I was 14 when I went to this funeral. It was my grandfather's funeral, you know what I'm saying? I grew up with him. So he died um, because he got hit by a hit and run car on the way to bingo. So that took a lot out of me. Like seriously, it took a lot out of me. Um, it took a lot out of me as a teenager, especially because that was, he was so close to me as my grandfather. We lived with him. He took care of me. He watched me when my mom was at work. So it bothered me a lot. And I was depressed for like three months. I didn't go to school. So I ended up, um, you know, missing out on three months of school. Um, thanks a lot, camera. I ended up missing out on three months of school because of the situation. Luckily I passed with summer school. Um, and, um, then I had to go to my aunt Rhoda's funeral, which is, you know, you guys heard of my cousin Kenya, the one from New York, who I went to the hair show with, who, you know what I'm saying? We grew up together too, but I don't really care for her attitude. Well, I had to go to that probably like seven, eight years ago. Um, and I didn't see her body because she was cremated. Now, when my grandfather, he didn't die right away. He lived for 11 days, I think it was. And he was paralyzed from the neck down. So I was at the hospital every day with him. And unfortunately, they had to take him off of life support. When my aunt Rhoda, she was cremated. She had got sick from cancer. And so I didn't get to see her body. And I hadn't seen her for some years. So it it bothered me, but it didn't bother me as bad. And I'm not really sure why I didn't cry like that. Um, and then last week, 
last week, um, Friday, Thursday, Thursday evening. Oh, this fucking computer. What is it? Thursday evening was the viewing of Josh. And I don't know, some people call it something different. I know as a black person, as an African-American, as a colored person, we call it a wake. So I'm not really sure if it's changed names, but it's called a viewing here in Arizona. And, you know, I was afraid for my son because he had never been to a funeral and they were so close. That was the only person that he really shared his time with and spent like 90% of his time with. So it was hard and I was scared because I didn't really know what my son was going to go through and I didn't know how he was going to take seeing his best friend, his brother, laying in a casket. Um, when we went in, you know, it was a beautiful ceremony. And um, my son, of course, it hurt him a lot. It hurt him a lot to see Josh like that. And, you know, I know that people have their beliefs and me personally, I don't, and I'm, and I, and I, and I respect everybody's belief. Um, but I just feel like when, you know, you have passed away, I don't know, like, I just really want to remember the person for themselves, like how they are. And I know sometimes it may be a little bit hard to, um, grant that person or that family member, the request of their deceased loved one. But I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? When you pass away, you just want to be remembered as yourself. So with that being said, you know, I just feel like sometimes when these morticians do the deceased person's um, makeup, they just, they do too much. And it makes the person look like a waxed figure. And I just, you know, as it bothered me to see him laying in there like that. You know, of course, when you die, your body does get bigger. It bloats, you know, so that's to be expected. But just to see all the makeup just caked on, it just, just, hurt, it just hurts my heart sometimes because I just feel like it's all for a look. And I understand we do want our last, our loved ones to, their last look to be beautiful, but I just feel like sometimes it takes away from the beauty of that person by just caking on so much makeup. And, it, you know, I just wish it was a little bit more light-handed. And, you know, it bothered me to see that they put so much makeup on his face, you know, because that's not how I remembered him and that's not how he looked. So that's the part that really bothers me because it makes the person end up looking like a wax person. And I know that, you know, sometimes some circumstances, it may not be the case and that may be possible, but I'm pretty sure that it doesn't have to be so thick of a makeup. Um, his ceremony was beautiful. Uh, Friday was the actual funeral, but it wasn't a burial. So, you know, we did see the casket. He was driven away in a white, um, you know, hearse, which was beautiful. Um, the, ga the casket was closed, of course. Um, we didn't see the burial only because um, they'll have a private ceremony. And from what I understood, he will be cremated and he will be put in like a monastery. And I thought that was beautiful because that's what I want when I die. And I know, you know, probably nobody really wants to talk about this, but it's, it's life. This is what goes on in life. We live and we die. And I just don't want to be buried in the ground. Like that's me. I don't want to be buried in the ground because I don't like bugs. And for me, I feel like this, like if you bury me in the ground, you are really not allowing my spirit, my soul to escape that body that it had borrowed all these years. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, this is, this is my belief and everybody, like I said, has their own beliefs, but I feel like we all have an afterlife, like a reincarnation. We all have a reincarnation, basically. And I feel like our spirits, our souls leave the bodies that we are borrowed, that we have borrowed, and we are reborn into a new body. You know what I'm saying? Like a new baby. We're a new baby. We are reborn. And that's just my belief. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people believe that there's heaven and hell. I honestly feel like where we live at now is already hell. And I feel like when we in heaven, I don't really know if I can 
like say there is a heaven because everything is made out to be like you know drawn out for you kind of like you know what i'm saying when i say drawn out like meaning like when you when you picture heaven from what we were taught you picture it in the sky in the clouds and these pearly gates and we all living in white gowns and we just basically living in in heaven in the sky and i really don't believe that and i'm pretty sure no one else does either it's a different type of way and in my way in my perception of it i feel like our heaven is being able to be reborn reincarnated and come back as a new person you know what i'm saying we get another chance we get another chance we get another chance to make good of ourselves of our spirit you know what i'm saying of our soul and that's just my belief you know what i'm saying but it did really hit hard for me and i just really didn't have it in me to do real talk like my attitude was kind of really like fucked up you know what i'm saying and i cried for like days you know what i'm saying this is not my best friend but he was like a kid to me and it just hurts to see somebody because he was just at my house you, you see them all the time and now it's like you're not going to be able to see them come through this door no more you're not going to be able to see them smile you're not going to be able to see them make your kid happy your son happy your family happy you're not going to be able to see all these things that you remember with this person you're not going to be able to see this and it's just so unfortunate that you know in real life and in reality the good always die young like you ever notice that you know evil 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 people they always outlive the good always it doesn't matter what it's from it could be something violent it could be something natural. It could be something synthetic, like, you know what I'm saying, drug over. It could be anything, but it just feels so bad to me that, you know what I'm saying, this this kid, this young boy, he just turned 22 in February. February 8th, the day before my mom's birthday, 22, and he's gone. So it really bothered me. So, you know what I'm saying, that's where I was. I was home and I wasn't doing any videos. I didn't do any videos all week because I just really didn't have the strength. So this is like my first video in like over a week. You know, when you do see me pop up a video every day, those are pre-recorded. You know what I'm saying? I do them like maybe three or four a day some shit like that i don't like sit here every day and do a video because yeah that's not about to happen but that was my week um other than that you know i'm fine um just been working i gotta bleach some more wigs again today um revamping my room slowly but surely like you know it takes me a minute to get shit done because i'll be having so much stuff to do every day so when i'll be wanting to redo my room i really need to take time to just say listen chill the fuck out april you know what i'm saying but as for that um i really want to thank um i don't even know who it came from and i don't even have it on me because i drank out of them but if you are the diva or the Devo who purchased two Wonder Woman tumbler cups, okay, from Amazon and had them sent to my P.O. box. I want to tell you thank you so much. It's so funny because I actually shared one of those with my husband. I gave him the one with the metal shaker inside of it because a couple days before that, we were looking for a tumbler cup, like a shake cup. And we was at the Dollar Tree, and they ain't really had nothing there. So we figured, okay, we'll go look another time. Well, why did I get the package in the mail? And to lo and behold, I was like, who bought this? At first, I was like, why is Amazon sending anything to my post office box? How do they know about my post office box? Then I had to stop and think, like, okay, April, stop acting freaking stupid. All right, stop acting stupid. You know, okay? So that's how I found out <laughs> that it was one of my subscribers. And it was just so weird because it's like every time I need something or I'm wanting something certain, why do I get a package, like, from one of you ladies or you men on, on YouTube? It's weird. It's so freaking weird. It's not even, I don't even mention it. But it happens quite frequently, and it bugs me out because I'm like, what the fuck? Are y'all in my brains? y'all in my head? But I wanted to tell you thank you, Diva, for the two cups because, honey, they both came in handy. So, yes, he is drinking out of that one, and I am drinking out of the other. Had me a nice cold lemonade on my bedside the other night with my one to one cup. 
Okay. So I wanted to tell you thank you. Whatever your name is, I appreciate it. I am delighted. Girl needed that. And stay out of my head. Okay. So on that note, we're about to get into this real talk video. I hope my freaking camera don't start flipping back and forth through the editing process because I don't know what the fuck is going on. I think I'm going to have to update it and down. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys, if you got a real talk that you would like me to, you know, embark on, talk on, you can always send me an email to my and it's my lovers, 2012. Oh, come on, camera, at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. And I think I know why it's doing that. And on that note, I think it has to do with all the electronics that's by my freaking computer and lights. I think that's what it has to do with because I noticed that this stuff starts happening. So, yeah, you, I don't even remember what I was saying, but let's just get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 This one is called a long distance relationship. So before I even start with the long distance relationships, okay, let me tell y'all this email. I already know what that's like because I had a long distance relationship for almost two years. Um, well, yeah, because my husband was living in New York and I was here. So he did come back home in March. So I had a long distance relationship and traveling back and forth to New York from Arizona can get pretty pricey. But and especially if you go in every couple of months, like a bitch was there every couple of months. OK, you know, you've seen y'all heard my black ass was up in New York for like two weeks at a time. Every couple months, like every two, every three months I was there, you know, what I'm saying with my hubby because I missed him and I needed to be around him and I wanted to be there with him and he wanted to be with me so a long distance relationship is really hard but you know what we we speak to each other all the time on the phones well, we did you know investing in a good earpiece so you don't have to have the phone up like this always helps trust me because i have had two of them um and we just text but we mainly would talk on the phones a lot um once in a blue we would text but we would always talk. And we would text too every day too. Just like little messages like I love you and shit like that. But we would always be on the phone. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I got an iPhone finally. A bitch finally got an iPhone, okay? I finally got an iPhone. And let me tell y'all real quick. Did the shit, you know how you have some in your back pocket, okay? Then you got to go to the bathroom. So when you go to the bathroom, the shit fall out your back pocket. Sometimes it fall in the toilet. So as soon as I put my pants down, the toilet, the phone fell in the toilet like day three or four okay and first of all it ain't like the newest iphone it's new to me like meaning it ain't the 10 okay but i had to jump let me, let me tell you the lens got wet and i had to put that shit in some rice oh i was so upset about that but yeah let's just get into this real talk because i'm like all over the place with this shit Okay, because I got some stuff I got to do, baby. So, hello, Miss April. I figured since you haven't been getting a lot of real talk submissions lately, and since I could use some real good advice, girl, I thought I'd email you. My name is Change to Joy. I'm 20 years old, and I'm in my first long time, long distance relationship. We've only been together for five months, which is nothing. Side note, my boyfriend, Steven, only lives three and a half hours away. But since it's not an hour drive, we settle on calling it a long distance relationship, which is true. For the most part, we mesh together just fine. He's a nice guy. We have similar goals, personalities, and interests. We text back and forth all the time. You know what I'm saying? I guess I'm wondering if I'm being ungrateful. The problem is we don't talk on the phone enough for, for me. We don't talk enough on the phone to my liking. And by that, I mean once a week for 15 minutes, we'll talk on the phone. I explained to Steven many times that sometimes it's just too much for me to lay all my thoughts and feelings out through text when calling and actually talking will be just quicker and a lot easier. He ended up telling me that he that even though he understood where I was coming from, he hates phone calls and will try to dodge a phone call whenever he can. Obviously, I felt some kind of way. 
I thought the problem was me and I started feeling really bad thinking about how I'm not good enough for one 15 minute conversation out of his 24 hour day. And it's not like I'm even asking, excuse me. And it's not like I'm even asking for a phone call every day, just once a week. I remember one time I called him. I really needed some encouragement because I was just really down. 10 to 15 minutes was all I needed from him. I explained all of that to him and I even said I would just need him to listen for five minutes, not even 10. When I began to talk, his phone kept buzzing and he kept and he told me that him and his friend were texting back and forth and to just give him a minute. While I'm waiting more than a couple minutes, might I add, he's laughing and joking and having a good time with his friend. So I reminded him that I was on the line and he told me to continue talking because he was listening. So I did. And when I asked for some acknowledgement on his part, he confessed that he didn't hear a single word I said because he was busy with his friend. Needless to say, I hung up. Now I understand that I probably blew that small matter out of proportion, but literally the other day he told me that I'm a great girlfriend and that I treat him wonderfully and that I do everything he needs and wants. But for me, I don't feel the same. There's many times, there's been many times he himself has promised me a phone call and accidentally fell asleep or forgot when the time came, which I call bullshit on because number one, as for getting, as for forgetting, if he can promise something without any prompt from me, it means that he knows how much it means to me. So why would he suddenly develop amnesia an hour later? And two, accidentally falling asleep. He literally plans when he is going to fall asleep because he can't sleep without taking his sleeping pills. I'm not an idiot. He doesn't want to talk. I know that. I just don't understand why he feels the need to keep lying to me. This is so pathetic. It's literally laughable. Miss April, this used to make me feel so bad. Like I wasn't even worth a 15 minute phone call. The thing is, I don't ask him for anything else. That's all I want from him. And he knows that. I just want someone to listen to me sometimes and make me feel like I'm being heard. Even if they have to pretend like they're listening to me, I'll take that. But he can't even do that much. We had a conversation the other day. He asked me if I, I didn't know that way. We had a conversation the other day. He asked me if I knew that he cared for me. And I told him that I didn't know because um, I didn't know that because, wait, what? We had a conversation the other day. He asked me if I knew that he cared for me. And I told him that I didn't know that he does and that I just didn't get those vibes from him. He told me to stop joking with him and I told him that I wasn't. I just don't feel an emotional connection with him. It's at the point where I'm detached from the situation and relationship. If you're wondering, I have tried doing what he asked and texting what I would say in a 15 minute phone call, but I get no response from him either way. So if you're wondering, I have tried doing what he's asked and texting what I would say in a 15 minute phone call, but I get no response from him either way. So I guess I'm wondering if I'm being selfish or, unre or unreasonable and if a 15-minute verbal conversation once a week is too much to ask for in a long dissimulation. Okay, so first of all, you know what? Uh, what was some girl's name? Joy, okay? So first of all, Joy is with Steven. She, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the phone that's making my screen flip. So Joy has been with Steven for five months five months. She's been with Steven for five months. Okay. They are in a long distant relationship, three and a half hours away. You know what I'm saying? They text every single day, all the time. They speak to each other once a week, 15 minutes. If that, she wants to speak to him more. He says that he tries to dodge any phone call that he can. He just don't like talking on the phone. She's trying and begging and pleading to him. Like, listen, I just need five minutes sometimes to your ear just to hear what I have to say because I go through things. You can't speak to me for 10 minutes out of your 24 hour, 10 to 15 minutes a day out of your 24 hour day. Like that should not be too hard. Now she's feeling like, is she being selfish? She's on the phone with him. You know what I'm saying? Basically talking to him, telling him how her day is. She's had a bad day. All she needed was like 10 minutes. He busy texting. She keeps hearing his phone buzzing. He's texting his friend while she's trying to have a conversation with him on the phone. And he's telling her, well, just go ahead. I'm going to listen. I just had to respond back to him. He's texting and laughing and geeky keying it up while she's like quietly on the phone, not saying nothing at this point. He's like, basically, you know, I'm listening. Just go ahead. 
he didn't hear a word she had to say. And now she's feeling like, is she being selfish? Y'all heard the whole email. First of all, sweetheart, let me tell you this. You're not being selfish because it's called communication. It's sad, you know what I'm saying, that this young generation, all they want to do is text, 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 text. You could be downstairs or upstairs. Your kids will text you. Hey, ma, can I do this? Or hey, ma, you got $20. Or hey, ma, you can come downstairs or upstairs and ask me or talk to me. Everybody wants to text. Everybody wants to just be behind the phone screen. Nobody can t pick up the phone no more and say, hey, how you doing? What's up? Hear your voice. Let me tell you this much. When you're in a relationship with somebody, I don't think that it's personable to be texting each other all day. You should not have to beg somebody to get 15 to 10 minutes out of their day, out of their 24-hour day if you live in a distance away from each other. I don't feel like Joy needs to be begging and pleading her boyfriend, Stephen, of five months if she can get 10 to 15 minutes every day from him for a phone call just to have a decent conversation because she doesn't want to put it all in text messages. I get that. First of all, text messages get screwed up. You texting, they're texting back. It doesn't work out that great. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, it's not personable. You know what I'm saying? It's not personal. It's a text message. Even though I can tell you exactly what I want to tell you in a text message. Thanks, camera. It doesn't work out that great. You know what I'm saying? Like on some real shit. I can tell you I love you in a text message versus telling you on a phone call. I can say I love you through a text and then I can tell you on a phone call. Do you see the difference? You read the text, I love you. That's all it says. But then you can hear me, hey, I love you. You can hear the emotion, the meaning in my voice, the tone. You can hear the sincerity in it. Well, the text message is just like basically, all right, I love you. That's like, it's not like it's not a big deal. It is still a big deal, but you are able to grasp the person's true feelings behind at least a phone call, a verbal phone call. Now, granted, I don't like to talk to everybody on the phone neither. That's just me. But there are some people that I will not text. I'm not about to sit here all day and text with you back and forth. That shit to me is corny because I could just get it over with. And on top of that, if I text you, please hurry up and text me to fuck right back. I cannot stand slow texters. I just don't like that because when you text me, a bitch is replying right away, okay? That's just me because I feel like it's cell phone etiquette, okay? You need to have cell phone etiquette, bitches. But when you're in a relationship with someone, five months for one ain't shit, okay? Just like she said, that ain't a long time. It ain't a long time. It's not even a relationship, boo. Like on some real shit, that's not even a relationship. And I'm sorry, but... I'm starting to feel some type of way about Steven. I don't know if it's me or do y'all feel that way, but if you got a beggar nigga to talk to you for like 10 to 15 minutes a day and he feel like he got to dodge the shit, yeah, go ahead and dodge everybody else. But if you trying to get with me and get to know with me and build something with me, I would think that you would not be trying to dodge my phone call. I would think that you trying to get to know me, see what we got going on. Yeah, we got goals and we got personalities, but I mean, I'm trying to figure out where Joy is like, you know, we mesh together real good good we're a good fit there's not a good fit there sweetheart because you like to communicate and he really lacks in that department of communication <clears throat> you know what i'm saying y'all ain't really getting to know one another y'all really ain't getting to know one another's dislikes and likes i mean like you are but you're not able to see and feed on the um the verbal portion of that like it's not a relationship to me this feels like some type of online bullshit and even those people that do internet dating and online dating or catfishing they even talking on the motherfucking phone or facetiming but this nigga cannot give you 10 to 15 minutes out of his fucking raggedy ass day to talk to you verbally on the phone therefore that i feel like you're not the one being selfish or petty or childish it's steven that's being selfish petty and childish or, I mean, I really didn't want to say this. I really did not want to bring this up into the matter because, you know, I don't really want to make people feel like, oh my God, I better watch out for this nigga. He might be, you know what I'm saying, a cheater, a liar. He might be into some shit. You know what I'm saying? He might got a family. This is though what I'm feeling in my heart. Okay. Like seriously, I understand that people don't like to be on the phone. I'm one of those people. I don't really like to talk to people too much on the phone. That's just me. I don't, I don't know why. I just, I don't, I don't really like to talk on the phone too much because for one, I got too much shit that I have to do. And on top of that, I don't really want to talk to people too much. So when it comes to like friends and shit, like, okay, you know, 
I said, I don't really have too many friends, which I don't, you know what I'm saying? I got my bestie, um, um, Rebecca back. We besties again. Well, we always been besties, but we have kind of like a, not really like a falling out, but we kind of lost communication with each other, you know? And I think I did explain that to you guys that I should have just called her up. She called, you know, we did call each other or text it. We texted. We didn't call. See, this is where the communication gets fucked up. We didn't call. We texted and she didn't get my text message and I wasn't getting hers. And it just happens to be like sometimes where she works at, I don't get them and she won't get mine. So I kind of felt like she was falling off from me and our friendship and she felt the same way. And I just so happened to be at the store where she worked at and we just, you know, we got back together. We got back in touch. And when I got that phone call, actually, uh, regarding Josh, I was, me and my husband was at Rebecca and her husband's house. And, you know, they met with each other. And we was having a good time. So I'm glad that I have her as a friend. And I'm glad that I have my friend Robin and my friend Nadira. So I only got three friends. Uh, well, excuse me, four, because I got my girl Shay. So, you know, but I don't speak to them every day. I don't speak to them on a daily basis. And I'm fine with that because I'm not a phone person. Like, I really don't like to talk on the phone. Um, but I do make exceptions to the rules. Like, I will talk to my kids on the phone all day. I'll talk to my mom on the phone all day. My father, my brother, my sister, you know what I'm saying? Um, not my cousins and my husband. We would talk all the time. But other than that, sometimes I will send you to voicemail and it's not done intentionally. It's that during that particular time, I got shit I'm doing. I'm probably in the middle of video recording or video editing. And also if you ain't like one of my immediate family, like, you know what I'm saying? My kids, my mom or my husband, when it's three o'clock and you call on my phone, I'm not answering because for one, my daughters just got out of school. And for two, I'm not going to be on the phone with you when I need to speak with my kids and find out how their day has been, how they doing, you know what I'm saying? I don't take away from my children. So, you know, there have been plenty of times when my friend Shay has called me and I sent her a voicemail and she says, wow, oh, I'm surprised you answered your phone. I told you, girl, at this certain time, from two o'clock when my daughter Nate gets out until like five, I'm not, I'm not picking up the phone to talk to anybody unless it's my husband or my mom or somebody in my immediate family because my kids have just came home from school and it is my duty to help them with their schoolwork and also to see how their day has been so I don't take that away um but on other occasions I do text I will text you you know what I'm saying but I don't make it unpersonable if it's to the point where girl I don't want to keep texting you I will call you you know what I'm saying but I feel like this when you're in a relationship with somebody and you're getting to know somebody, you you need to make it your business to get to know that person. You know what I'm saying? Not with no fucking text messages. It's this world today. Like, you know, I'm, I'm about to be 45 years old next month in June, bitches. So me, when I grew up, we didn't have text cell phones. We didn't even have internet when I grew up. All right. And I know y'all probably like, what? Bitch, yeah, I didn't. There was no internet until 1991, 92. Okay. And there were no cell phones when I was growing up. We didn't have all that shit. So our ways of communication was writing letters. Okay. Talking on the phone or seeing your black ass or white ass or whatever color your ass is in person. We weren't texting. All right. I don't like to text like that because I got shit to do. Texting takes away from what I'm doing at the time because I got to constantly be picking up the phone and texting when versus let me just sit my black ass down for a second with you. And we can talk about shit. You know what I'm saying? We can definitely talk about shit. So that's how I feel about that. However, you know what I'm saying? When you're in a relationship with someone and, you know, you trying to get to know them, I feel like it's very beneficial and crucial to get to know that person. I feel like you need to pick up the phone. Now, we're going to go back to Stephen's attitude. You know what I'm saying? She's begged and pleaded with him. She feels like she's detached from the relationship. She probably feels like it's not worth it. And honey, sweetheart, you young joy. Your name is joy. You bring in joy to yourself. Don't let no man drag you the fuck down and, and bring you down because of his selfish ways. Now, mind you, even if he's not cheating on you or he ain't got no side family, even if there's no negative and he just don't like to talk on the phone, he's still being negative. 
You understand what I'm saying? He's not even trying to get to learn you, to get to know you. He's not even trying to compromise. You do everything that he asks, but then he cannot give you 10 to 15 minutes of his time every day. That means that he's really childish. That, for one, to me, the stream's childish, okay? Two, he's not really good at communicating, okay? And for three, he's not worth your time, sweetheart. That's three strikes, boo. You out. I feel like this. Three hours, three and a half hours, that's not a long distance. It's great. But, sweetheart, why put yourself through the, the turmoil and the, the bullshit for three and a half hours of a long distance relationship that's only been five months when you could just get to know yourself and someone in your own local vicinity who will even give you more than 10 to 15 minutes of your time on a daily basis and they live right there in your area. That's what I'm talking about. Let's let's say this. Let's never chase nobody. I don't give a fuck if you're a female chasing another man. I don't give a fuck if you're a man chasing another woman. I don't give a fuck if you're a woman chasing a woman, a man chasing a man, a woman chasing a dog, cat, whatever the case may be. We don't go around chasing behind one another or be behind people because, for one, once you start chasing behind these motherfuckers, they start to feel like you're vulnerable and like they got you wrapped around their motherfucking finger, et cetera, et cetera. That's just how it goes, okay? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. As far as, now, as far as Steven and his selfishness, sweetheart, I really think, like, to be honest, you just need to cut your ties with him. He's, to me, in my opinion, it's not worth it. There's no reason why anyone should have to fight with someone to get a phone call. That's just you begging and pleading. And for me, I feel like we better than that. We bigger than that. We can do better than that. We should never have to lower ourself or our self-esteem or our morals and our values for anyone. And that's just point blank, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way on God's green earth am I going to sit around and wait for you to call me once the fuck a week. L listen, let's get this straight. First of all, there's 365 motherfucking days in a year. Bitch, I didn't say you had to call me 365 of those fucking days, but bitch, you best at least call 345 of those days, especially if we're in a relationship. There is no reason why I should not get a phone call from somebody who I'm with and I care sincerely for once a motherfucking week. So what are you doing those six other days? You know what I'm saying? And when you're calling me once a week, it's only for 10 to 15 minutes. You out your rabbit ass mind if you think that I'm about to sit here and wait for your fucking raggedy ass phone call. And then on top of that, schedule something and then tell me you accidentally fell asleep. Boy, are you crazy, Stephen and Joy. Let's get this together and let this get the shit right real quick. Man or female, there's seven days in a motherfucking week. If you can't give me 10 minutes each motherfucking day, or every other day, or six days a week. You know, some days we might fall asleep because we worked, we went to school, so we might be tired. You know, that's honesty. But if you can only give me 10 to 15 minutes of your time once a week, then I don't think that I'm worthy enough. You know what I'm saying? 10 to 15 minutes a day is really not much at all. I mean, because like, seriously, what are you doing? You get home, from work or school or whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying? And you sit down for a few minutes. We sit down on our asses more than 10 minutes a day, okay? Because we go to sleep. So I'm pretty sure that Steven can give Joy at least 15 to 30 minutes a day out of his time while he's cleaning his house, while he's cooking, while he's picking out his clothes to wear, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that she could be worked in his schedule. But when you are so into yourself, and you really are into yourself like that, then maybe it's not possible. And it's unfortunate that as a person, as a human being, that we would have to sit there and beg a person that we care about, please can I get 10 to 15 minutes of your time? Can you just answer because I need someone to hear me vent? That right there, I don't know how that would make y'all feel, but I know that if I had to basically plead with my man to give me like 10 minutes a day or once a week to listen to me and talk to me on the phone, I would feel like this big. Like seriously, I would feel like this big only because that's not me. I feel like this. It's a give-give situation. You call me, I call you. The phone works on both ways unless your shit got shut the fuck off. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I feel. That's the ways of open communication. This relationship ain't going to work. But here's the part that, you know what I'm saying, I'm pretty sure Joy ain't want to hear. She ain't going to want to hear. And this was not in the email. But y'all are three and a half hours away. Y'all are young. Y'all go to school. 
he um he telling you all the good things that you want to hear of course he's not going to tell you you know how much i don't care about you you know what i'm saying he's not going to tell you he don't care about you even if he doesn't he's not going to tell you that he's not going to tell you yeah i'm cheating on you and that's the only reason why i want to text you every day he's not going to tell you that what i'm thinking and this is just me okay i could be wrong shout out to dunkin donuts because i love you so much but I could be wrong about this. That's just me. I feel like this nigga might be having a girlfriend living with him. He might got a whole different life, a whole life, a whole life outside of this long distance relationship that Joy ass don't know. She ain't gonna be too joyful about that shit no more once she find out if it's true. I'm not saying it's true, but I just find it real suspect that you, like a person could really dodge, really want to dodge calls. Like, let's, let's be, let's, 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 you know what? Let's be on some real, real shit right now. Y'all know y'all young people like being on the motherfucking phone. Y'all know y'all like texting. Y'all know if y'all got a bitch or a nigga y'all trying to get with, y'all going to talk to them on the phone verbally because y'all trying to get up in them panties, up in them drawers, whatever the fuck it is, y'all going to talk to them verbally. Now then, you will have some times where you want to talk via text message, okay? That's fine too, but I'm pretty sure you're going to give that person some of your undivided attention because you want to either get to know them on real 100% get to know them and you ain't got no malice and no hidden agendas. Or two, you got some hidden agendas. You want to get to know them so you can get to know what they got in their pants, in their pocket, in their bank account, in house whatever the fuck it is you're going to verbally talk to them so i really don't think that there's really no excuse for nobody wanting to talk to nobody on the phone verbally i think what steven's excuse is he's doing some whole different shit that he ain't got no business fucking doing okay there's just me and that's the reason why he don't want to verbally talk to her on the phone that's just me now this is this me and this is what i'm about to tell you joy don't waste your motherfucking time. No other five months, no other month on Steven ass. If he got goals and he big headed and he feel like, you know what I'm saying? He too cool to answer the phone for you, sweetheart. Let him be too cool with the next bitch, okay? Or with whoever else. You don't never have to lower your self-esteem or yourself and feel like, you know what I'm saying, you being selfish because you asking somebody that you want to build a relationship with to give you 10 to 15 minutes of their time each day. If you got to beg a nigga and you have to plead with them and you have to compromise with them and you have to give them details of the reasons why you want to speak to them every day for like 10 to 15 minutes, then bitch, there's no reason to be even talking to them at all. Okay, what I'm saying is if that nigga can't give you 10 to 15 minutes on a daily basis out of a long distance relationship, then sweetheart, you need to tell his ass goodbye. That was a one way ticket, nigga. I'm not returning. See you when I see you. Sayonara. I'm just saying. That's my take on it. Regardless of that nigga cheating or not. If he ain't cheating, okay. And if he isn't cheating. Or if, if, if he ain't cheating, okay, that's great. And if he is cheating, okay, that's great too. But I'm going to tell you what, if you can't give me that appreciation, that that if you can't show me that love, that same love that I show back to you, nigga, bye. See ya. We're not about to text. It's not about to be a texting relationship. That we're not about to do. You'll never get to know anybody via text message. You get 15 minutes out of your time or once a week to talk to this nigga, you ain't learning shit. All y'all talking about is probably what y'all done did or whatever for 15 fucking minutes. And wow, what the fuck is 15 fucking minutes if you speak to the person once a week? Girl, bye. That nigga would have been long gone, okay? I'm not about to be wasting my time for five months with nobody who ain't even trying to show me no type of appreciation and no type of love and show me the same shit back all right there's avenues to this shit there's lanes to the shit nigga you stay in your lane over there the no talking lane okay and nigga i'm gonna stay over here in my lane where we get to know one another and we know how to communicate don't waste your time on somebody that don't really want to communicate to you because that right there lets you know that you're not worthy enough of 10 minutes and if you can't even give me more than 10 minutes nigga i don't give two fucks about you I ain't unworthy and you are worthy or whatever the case may be. I'm not about to waste my time texting somebody all day fucking long. You either going to pick up that phone and get to know me for real or we're not going to get to know one another. And that's good. I'm happy. I'm fine with that because I guarantee you the next nigga that want to fucking chat it up all motherfucking day long will be on my line calling me buzz buzz. Hello. So, Joy, I really feel like, you know what? You had your run. 
Stephen, he still got his run going on because whoever he running that game on, don't believe that shit and don't fall for that shit. And if he's truthful and he's being honest and he's sincere, then that's fine too. But you know what? That's not your stilo. That's not your style. That's not your personality. And don't lower your personality. Don't change up. Don't switch up for who you are for nobody. You be you and be yourself. And if you like to communicate via phone, then that's verbally, then that's what you do. And if you want those people that just like text messaging all day long, then that's your business too. But you're not that person. You a person who needs attentiveness, attention, a good ear to listen to, some communication, some values. Let's get to know one another. So, Divas, other than that, you know what I'm saying? Let Joy know what you would do in a situation. I mean, I'm just saying, everybody to each his own. You know what I'm saying? It just sucks that today, everybody's lack of communication, it really does show. And, you know, <laughs> I must be really old school. You know, you ever feel like as a teenager, when you would hear your mom or your dad or whoever raised you, oh, that music, they would talk shit about your music. They would talk shit about how we would dress, what we would watch. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying, right? And then we would be as teenagers like, I ain't never going to be like my mom. I ain't going to. She always complain. I ain't never going to be like that when I have kids. Listen, I am like that. I'm probably worse than that. But. The funny thing is, I am worse than that, but it's like, when I go outside, you know, sometimes I feel like I've gotten really, I don't know if it's old age or I've just matured, but you know, the things that you see in the, with this new generation, these younger kids, it's like, God damn, you guys, like not all of you guys, but enough of you guys lack communication skills, like on some real shit. And on top of that, a lot of you guys feel like at the young age that shit is supposed to be handed to you or like y'all supposed to be some type of overnight millionaires. Are y'all supposed to be paid? Y'all supposed to get the bag overnight? And it don't work like that in the real world. It's perseverance. Y'all have to work for what the fuck y'all need to do, regardless if it's a relationship or whatever. You know, it's this is the real world. What happens if all that shit shuts down tomorrow? What if there's no internet tomorrow, no cell phones, no none of that shit? What the fuck is y'all going to do? You know what I'm saying? What if it's some real shit like some zombie apocalypse, like some walking dead shit? You, who you gonna call? You, you ain't gonna be able to call nobody. You ain't gonna be able to use the internet to get around. You gonna have to figure it out on your own. And it sucks because this world is so into like technology and technology that, you know what I'm saying? They've lost, like, they've lost the sense of humanity i feel like you know what i'm saying like you see people they they're recording fights and vicious attacks you're standing there recording this with your phone but you can't even help out the individual like what sense does that fucking make like instead of recording shit and going off and, and looking for clout fucking help the person you know, everybody is always, not everybody, but people, there are too many people out there for clout. Like, let's, let's put these phones down and join the real world without a phone. Like, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't be on my phone all day because I just don't, I just don't want to, you know, I don't really like for people to call me all the time. I don't really like to even get text messages. Honestly, I'm the type of person I don't really like to be bothered too much. That's just me. And it's sad because I'm the type of person, like, I'll fuck you with you. I'll fuck with you when I feel like it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's probably why I don't have too many friends. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not that, I'm I'm social, but, you know what I'm saying? I don't really have a lot of friends. I don't really want you coming to my house. I don't really want you calling me all the time. That's just me. I've always been like that. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't like to go out to parties. I don't do shit like that. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm a very closed in person, like not like, like inside, but like not mentally, but you know what I'm saying? Like as far as like going out and doing crazy wild things are, I just don't do that. And I don't really like to socialize verbally on the phone too much or text message. I'm just not a phone person, but I will give you my undivided attention. Need be. You know what I'm saying? That's me. Like, I can definitely switch it up for some people, for someone. But I just feel like with this day and age, too many people rely on text messaging. And, you know, it would be funny if you couldn't text somebody for like a whole week. I'm pretty sure people would have a heart attack and probably pass the fuck out and not know what to do with themselves because they can't text one another. And I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? That's, it's not, it's not all there is to life versus texting. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, pick up the phone and say, hey, how you doing? What's up? I wanted to hear your voice. It's always nice to hear someone's voice on the other end versus read what the fuck they said. Like, you could have copied and pasted that shit from somewhere. How the fuck I know you really meant that shit? I need to hear that shit genuinely in your motherfucking tone of voice. I know fake shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's what I needed to share with y'all. I'm going to go because, you know, real talk has been long enough. And I did have this other one that was super duper long. I think this bitch wrote a book. But I will read that one to y'all next week. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely will read that one to y'all next week. Because that one, girl. That one was fast. She sent me two emails. So, yeah. Diva that sent me the two emails like two weeks ago. I'll be doing yours next week. Just yours. And yours only. I'm not even going to talk about myself. So anyway, you guys, I gotta go. I'm gonna do another video. It's a haul, right? Mm -hmm. So I love you. Stay diva and diva delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in a soon to come video. Make sure you rate, you know what I'm saying? Share it with everybody. Share it with your friends, your mama, your daughter, your son, your baby daddy, your ex-friends, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, your ex-family members, your ex-cons. I don't care. Just share it.